Hi there, hello there, my name is Kraft, and today I just wanted to do another casual video and just show off uh, my creative world. Because honestly, I've been working on these worlds for so long, and I've never really had a chance to show them off to anyone. And yeah, I just wanted to take some time to do that for today. I guess we can jump right on in to the very build that I'm standing on right now. This is the Destiny's Bounty from LEGO Ninjago, which is a show that I have loved for many, many years. I had a lot of fun designing this. It's gone through some trial and error, but I think I have landed on a design that perfectly encapsulates the uh, Season 1 vibe, as well as the Legacy design. I really like the uh, dripstone bits right here or the stalactites or the stalagmites, or whatever these ones are called. <laughs> and then I was able to make some thrusters using the shroom lights, which I thought looked pretty cool. Here's a look at the deck of the boat. As you can see, it is very, very spacious. Here's the main driving area. Comparator as the uh, driving stick or steering stick or I don't, I don't know. <laughs> look, I, I build Minecraft stuff for fun. I don't know the terminology of things, okay? Then I have a power gauge, and then I have a lot of wiring for all the mechanical stuff to the uh, main stairway to the lower deck. Here I have like a little cooking area, a little thing to, you know, a little sink, and a little smoker so that the ninja can cook food. And if we go over here, we have a nice little desk area, as well as uh, sleeping quarters for each of the ninja. For Lloyd, Zane, Jay, Cole, Mia, and Kai. And behind this door, you may have heard it, but this is the main engine keeping the ship in the air. It's very noisy. <laughs> this world was built on the Switch, but I recently transferred it over to PC just for this recording. And I didn't realize how loud the uh, campfires are. Like, they, they are just so noisy. <laughs> and then over here we have weapon storage. You have stuff like swords and crossbows. And so yeah. This up here was the hardest part for me to design, which was the sail. Because it is, it's is—it's just an odd shape. I'll show an image on the screen of what they're supposed to look like. And just having them in flight mode with cubic shapes is... It's just very difficult, especially when it comes to like being on at an angle and stuff. I, I guess that's the best that I could ever do at the moment. Next over here, we have some uh, test houses that I wanted to do since I wanted to design some villages. Designing villages is one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft. And these are just like small little houses. This one is a pumpkin village where we have like a small little bed, storage, as well as like a little shelf with a little skull up there which I feel like fits with the pumpkin spooky scary aesthetic. We have jack-o'-lanterns as light sources for the outside. And then over here we have a slightly bigger one with a little bit more room. We have a little table and then we have some beds which are kind of scattered all over the place. <laughs> this is the first time I've looked at this in several years and wow, very, very messy. I feel like I, I could have done that better. Then over here we have a treehouse design which uh, honestly, I didn't really put that much thought or effort into it. I just wanted to see if I could build something in a tree. Got like a little cooking station as well as a crafting area and then a useless fletching area. Uh, Mojang, if you're watching this, please add a functionality to the fletching table. That would be really, really cool. Also add the copper golem. That would also be really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, I just have it here because I think it looks nice. And yeah, just overall, this whole thing just looks nice. It looks like an actual like tree house that's, you know, built into the tree. And over here, I have a uh, basic house design. Right here, we have some nice uh, kitchen interior. I've discovered that the uh, spruce planks are the best blocks to use for furniture designs because you just have like the barrel and all that. It just works out really nice as like a nice uh, rustic looking sort of thing. And yeah, it even works for furniture blocks like the uh, smoker and stuff like that. It just looks really, really nice. Got the jukebox, got the uh, chimney, which, I don't know, it just kind of blends in here. We walk upstairs and we just have a very simple bedroom just kind of up here. Kind of reminds me of like a child's room, but with the limited space, this is the best thing I could do. And then over here, we just have a, a garage. 
It used to have stuff, but I decided to clear it out because I just want something else in here. And right outside, I don't know why I built this, but this is supposed to be the uh, UFO from Rick and Morty. Uh, don't know why it's here, but hey, it's here. Over here, I tried to experiment with a one block tall base. So if we just uh, crouch down like this... <laughs> This is very up close to the camera. I don't like this. Uh, but if we go in here, there, we can actually like see like I have some storage space and then over here I have some stuff to use. Right now I just have the crafting table and furnaces, but you can actually dot a whole bunch of stuff across this wall if you want to make the stuff for that. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Right over here, we have the Monastery of Spinjitsu, which this is a build that I want to update because the one that shows in Ninjago Dragons Rising is so much prettier looking than the base one. And I think I could actually do a whole lot better job with it as far as like the angles. Cause like I only have like this bit as an angle as well as the little back bits. And I feel like I could do a way better job with it, especially with like the color schemes and the block selection and all that. Anyways, up here we just have like a little meditation area with a little carpet. Got an amethyst, got little cherry blossoms dotted around. You'll see these a lot throughout this build. And got a little upstairs area. We've got the library of books. And then up here we just got like a, I don't know, I guess like another meditation area or storage area, whatever you want to call this area. Go back downstairs. You can see that there are two hallways. And let's go to this left one first. And over here in these hallways, I actually have the ninja's bedrooms. And here we have Cole's room. In this one we have Lloyd's room and then over here we have Nia's room and then in the other hallway I have Jay, Cole, and Kai. So really I just have like a base of operations here for the ninja which I think is really really nice and yeah I just kind of like how it all comes together but like I said before there is plenty of room to improve on this and lastly for this world file we have Subway. <laughs> hey! You know how Minecraft is kind of like Subway? <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, the reason why I have built Subway and have talked about Subway at such a high capacity- Uh oh, I just broke something. <laughs> the reason why I've talked about it in such a high capacity is because I used to actually work at a Subway. And it was just something that uh, I was very passionate about at the time. And so I decided, you know what? How can I actually build a lore accurate subway <laughs> and so here I have this very very small dining area with tables I got the uh, selection of like meats and then veggies got the display of the cookies here I got the little checkout desk I got the mobile pickup area and then if you come here to the back you have the prep tables yeah honestly the back is very bland but that's kind of just like you know whatever here I have the uh, walk-in freezer. I know in some subways it's actually like a combination of like just the regular walk-in for the supplies and then the freezer is its own separate thing. But each subway is kind of different. The one I worked at was actually much larger than the other ones, but it's subway. It's still tiny. And yeah, up here we have the uh, bread cabinet. We have the, I guess a sink here. I don't know. We got the uh, oven where we used to actually like bake the bread. Here we have that oh so deafening toaster. And then over here, since I wanted to be up to date to my subway lore, we have the uh, meat cutter, which they have up here for the customers to see them cutting meat. I think it's very stupid. And to complete our subway tour, we have incomplete restrooms. <laughs> I forgot to install toilets! <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, this build was made several months ago. So, yeah. I guess I need to actually, like, update it at some point. And so, yeah, that'll have to do it with the, this world. But this world isn't the only world. Because if we just quickly transport ourselves to the other worlds... Boom! Alrighty, let's just go ahead and remove ourselves from the bounty and this is my main creative world what we saw was just my testing world and this is mainly my main dumping grounds for like ideas of like villages and stuff like that 
So let's go ahead and make our way down here. I actually haven't figured out a name for this town, but as we enter from the docks, we can see like a little marketplace where various people are selling different wares. Over here we have the Monster Parts Pro, where they sell like little monster parts. As you can see, it's like rotten flesh and spider eyes. And then over here we have Vanny's Flowers. <laughs> and we just kind of, it's a little flower shop. They sell like cactus and roses and, and whatever those are in the back. <laughs> over here we have, well actually one of the longest running uh, themes in my, many of my worlds. It's called uh, Red and Stones, Redstone Shop, where they sell redstone components. Honestly, I feel like with any world I'm part of, I'll try and build a Red and Stones redstone shop. It just seems like a funny little thing that I like to do. Especially since, you know, you need redstone to make super smelters. And we have uh, Jet Records Express, <laughs> where we sell like the uh, little record discs. We even have like a little uh, stereo system back here, which I think is nice. If you get this reference, haha, funny. Next shop over here is Freeze Ice. It's literally just an ice shop. <laughs> and I think that's pretty funny. And over here we have Switch Stems Shop. This is doubly funny because not only is the color scheme match with the Nintendo Switch, but this entire world was actually made on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> so, yeah. And last but not least, actually one of my favorite shop is Wandering Wares, where they sell various uh, things for explorers, like the goat horn, maps, spyglasses, and all the other stuff that an explorer or an archaeologist would need. And I just think this is a really nice shop. As we make our way up to the main shopping district area, we have... Sussy Stews! Potions and Stews! <laughs> this is just my little potion shop. We have it nice and dark in here just to give it like a weird mysterious mood. Although you still have like the glowing uh, item stands or item frames just so you can see the actual products on sale. Which I think is nice. You can also use like the little cauldrons to get potion samples. Which I think is pretty cool. Over here we have Diggs Duds too. Uh, this is a deep cup reference to a very weird, very poorly rendered animation from my childhood. Uh, I'll try and find some footage and put it in this video. But uh, yeah, this is Diggs Duds 2. And they make the uh, designed armor, mainly leather armor with like little trims, but we also have just all the different colors here, which I think is really, really nice. Something that I've always wanted to add in my world is a clothing store, and I feel like this is a pretty good interpretation of a clothing store. Next up, we have a uh, Potter's Pottery, where we sell like the decorated pots and all that. I feel like with each new update, we can add like a different pot that represents a different update to the game. So that actually looks nice make our way back up the street and we have a GameStop. <laughs> we look in here and I've actually stocked this up with things you'd actually find in a GameStop like an HP Victus 15L which is the type of PC that I use. You have a Nintendo 3DS, XL, a PlayStation 5, that shouldn't be on here, a Xbox 360 and then we have some of the Pokemon trading cards just here in stock. I used uh, shields to represent the trading cards. And then if we look right over here, we actually have some games in stock, like Tomodachi Life, which is a, one of my top three favorite games of all time. We also have Animal Crossing and Super Mario Odyssey, uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Majora's Mask. We even have some other games over here, like uh, Peggle, <laughs> Tabs, <laughs> VR Chat, Elden Ring. And there's also an upstairs area too, which we have more games like Halo Infinite, Minecraft, and Call of Duty Warfare. I don't know why that's the Call of Duty I picked. Um, Spider-Man, Little Big Planet, Sonic Frontiers, and GTA 6, Lego Star Wars, The Complete Saga, Cyberpunk. And uh, you, you just have like a whole bunch of games just here on display for people to buy and then for them to sell. It's really, really nice. I like how I was able to compact it in this very nice and simple little build. And right next to it, we actually have the, um, the 
pet store. We have a lot of pets here. We have the fish. We have parrots. And over here we have a bunch of other ones. We have wolves. We have cats. We have bunnies. Aw, little bunnies. We also have pet rocks. <laughs> like, look, look at that. So lively. <laughs> that might be, like, one of my favorite ones. Although, it, the second place did the little bunnies. Look at them. Look at them. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, anyways. Ah. <laughs> okay, another running gag that I want to do is that pretty much in every town, I want to try and build a subway just to see if I can match the subway to different, like, city aesthetics. And so in this one, I have a subway here. And actually, I think I put a little bit more effort into this one. Like, you can see here, I actually have a place for, like, the soups and shit. <laughs> have a lot better, like, a uh, workplace up here. Like, there's a little bit more, like, desk. Have actual stuff on the mobile order station. I'm pretty sure I actually have restrooms. <laughs> yeah, I installed restrooms in this one, but not the other one. And then if we walk up here to the back, it's a little bit nicer looking. As well as in the freezer, it has more ice, so it's more frozen. <laughs> Let's just close that up real quick. And look at that! Wiggle room! I don't think I even have that in the other one. So uh, yeah, this is just like a nice little subway. And if you guys want me to show you like the little components that I use to make a subway, I could possibly do that as its own separate little goofy video. Uh, I will say right now that it will not be a tutorial video, just like a little thing that you can use for inspiration to build a subway of your own from a person who has actually had experience working in there. Alright, if we just uh, float up here, you can actually see that there are a lot of buildings, which I would love to show you in detail, but I feel like would be a little bit too much time to, you know, drag out the video, which I just want to do something nice and casual. Uh, I will highlight some stuff like this. This is the uh, clock tower, which is like the main thing in this village. It's like the tallest building. And it also has a beacon, which I find it really nice. Another one of my running things for each village is that I try and make like a... Kind of like a Pokemon center. <laughs> but since there are no Pokemon, it's just a medical center. And so this is just a place where like travelers can heal up and stuff. Like Pokemon. And what's a Pokemon Center without a Pokemon shop right around the corner? <laughs> this is the general store, uh, where we sell basically, like, very basic items, like a crafting table, or wood, or just food. Just essential stuff for anyone just going on a little Minecraft adventure. Um, I believe down this road we have a blacksmith shop. Which, in the lore of my character, I am an apprentice blacksmith. And so I just wanted to try and incorporate one into the kind of city that I inhabit. And yeah, it looks really nice. It looks really nice. I would totally work here. Up here we have a lot of like buildings, two-story, or just simple villager-style buildings. The thing is with my villages is that I like to go for a very Mojang-y style of building. And so I'll try and build huts or houses, kind of like the ones that you see already generating in vanilla Minecraft. And so it's just like a lot of these like smaller buildings. Occasionally you'll see like two wide buildings. Let me see if I can find a good example. Uh, yeah, right over here you'd see like there's like a little bit bigger one. And then up here we have the biggest ones, which look pretty nice. And... Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, over here we have the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And if we come in his side, <laughs> we actually have the animatronic band dancing <laughs> to no music. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you just take like a quick look at this, you'll see that I've actually done this place up as best as I possibly could. I even decided to take some creative liberties just to get like that iconic like a uh, checkered stripe across the wall using the uh, purple blocks. So I just kind of recolored everything to be purple, which we all know is a very iconic color from the series. Um, we have a little kitchen area back here. I even have like these observer blocks to act as like makeshift cameras. And if we make our way back here, 
uh, ignore that fire sound, but <laughs> we have the little security office <laughs> with the doors that you can actually, like, lock. <laughs> and so you can pretty much play FNAF. <laughs> Which I think is very funny. In here we have, like, a little maintenance area. Back here we have just Golden Freddy sitting here, or at least a representation of Golden Freddy. Uh, but yeah. I've done this place up as best as I could, and I think I did a pretty good job with it. If we just make our way back to the front, you'll see that I just- I'm very proud of this! Like, just this little kitchen area, we have like a whole bunch of like, uh, pizza ovens and all that. And then just like this, uh, dining room with the table with like a bunch of food on it. And then... This! With a lot of the redstone components, like, even if you just like, look behind the, uh... These little things, you can see that there's a lot of redstone that goes to these things. Yeah, I'm proud of this. <laughs> this is probably one of the most complex redstone things I've ever done, aside from super smelters. <laughs> just dancing armor stands. <laughs> yeah, just silly, goofy things like this that I build everywhere, which may or may not be important for story stuff, but honestly, we'll see. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of this town, and we actually have a much little smaller town right over here. This... Over here is Orangewood, which in my character's lore is the main, uh, pretty much base of operations. Just like a small little town, and here we actually have like a little fishing dock, where we have like little boats being grabbed by a little claw, have a bunch of shipping crates. Uh, I forget where I got the inspiration to do this from, but like these look really, really nice. Essentially, my policy of using Mojangy style houses continues, except for like this one big one, which... Uh, maybe I shouldn't show that one. That'll probably be for a later date. And then right over here, just kind of hidden in this little nook of the world, is my house, actually. I built it very similarly to that one over here, so looking in this one is pretty much looking into that one. Um, so yeah, we just have, like, basic furniture. We have a nice little kitchen, we got a nice little table, got a nice little desk here. We got my PC! <laughs> Actually, right now I only have two monitors, so this one isn't canon. <laughs> and then we just have like a little basic bedroom to sleep, which really this is all the space I need just for sleeping. I can have all this space for all my other activities, but sleeping, you only need so much space, honestly. Well, at least for me. So that's from over from this direction, but I actually have something over in this direction. So if we just head over there, I can show you what I have built over there. Now, I have been playing Minecraft for a very long time. Probably not as long as many of you have been thinking. Probably since like 2013 or 2015. But given in a year that's going to be a decade ago, that's still a long time. So uh, I've been building stuff for many, many years in worlds that have been lost to the sands of time. But one of those earliest builds, I decided to revive in a new fashion. Welcome to New Creeper City. This is inspired by one of my very first Minecraft builds where I have like a giant creeper statue <laughs> which basically acts as kind of like a Statue of Liberty and since I want the creeper aesthetic to pretty much coat over this entire city this time I decided to make everything out of the aged copper like in its more green state and honestly I just love the style that I did like it's just kind of has like this very riveted kind of industrial kind of look. Over here we have the general store. Like I said, I try and incorporate it into every village that I do. And another thing that I also done that I brought back from one of my earliest work is that I loved making uh, Super Mario style pipe houses. And so if we go into here, you can see that this is the start of a pipe house. I actually haven't finished it yet because, I don't know, I just kind of lost the time to. But you can see how I've already started to have it to where if you jump inside, it's kind of like a Mario pipe, and they're pretty much littered all throughout the city. Whether usable or not, it's just something that I want to bring back from my oldest projects. Uh, back here, I have a TNT, <laughs> TNT factory, because it just makes sense for a creeper city to have a uh, place of production for TNT. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the big area for like making TNT. But this is also the big place where I stored 
my server super smelter. <laughs> you can see all the furnaces laid out here. And if we just quickly load it up with some stuff, and if we turn it on... It didn't work. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think I immediately broke my smelter just by using stone. <laughs> How? <laughs> How did I do this? Well, it's... well, I'm sure that I can show you guys a working super smelter sooner or later, but that'll be later in the video. And so yeah, this is... I think this is the most complete city build that I've ever done. Because you can just see a lot of these houses just kind of dotted everywhere, and... It just looks so, so nice. Like, I just love this aesthetic. And now that I'm looking back on it, like, it's just so amazing. <laughs> I'm surprised at what I could do whenever I just have the time to do stuff, which, honestly, the main goal of this video is just kind of propose the idea that we can just have casual recordings where I could just create stuff and, and share it with you guys. Because, like, I just love the idea of, like, just sharing my creativity with you guys and hearing your feedback. And also the idea of building your silly ideas and incorporating them into my cities. It, 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 I just, it just sounds so fun. It sounds fun. And so let me know in the comments if you guys want me to just, like, make, like, a casual, like, series of, like, creative build sessions. We can call it a viewerville or something i don't know actually that could be its own little like like a town like we can go like right over here and then that could be viewerville and it could just be filled with a bunch of your ideas that would be so cool let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that and i guess to end off this video we're actually going to visit my redstone testing world and yes i decide to dress for the occasion and yeah here we can see all the redstone builds that i have done and or tested uh, <laughs> very clearly we can see my Grumbot build from my little Instagram tutorial back in the day. Oh, Grumbot, look at you. You've aged horribly. <laughs> I remember you used to look so cool, but man, what happened to you? You've just been covered in moss and mycelium. Uh, do the insides even work anymore? Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay, he works! <laughs> uh, up, oh, but I don't think he spits out anything. Oh man. I should really revisit this idea in its own, like, video. Which probably would actually be a little tutorial video. But yeah, I just remember being super proud of making, like, a Bedrock compatible Grumbot. And I feel like if I revisit this idea, I could make something really, really cool. Oh my god! <laughs> Uh, yeah, but something that's not this would be really, really nice, you know? Uh, I don't know if you can see it through the vines, but it's mainly just observer tech. I mentioned this kind of offhandedly in my uh, Golem video part 2, that I just love observer stuff, observer redstone. It's just easy for me to kind of work with in creative mode, you know? And that's how it's made. Okay, here we go. Here's my beloved super smelter. Hopefully this is the one that works. Yes! This is the one that works! Here you can see all the stuff I've smelted in it throughout the years. I haven't removed any of it because I just like seeing number go up. <laughs> and look, there he goes! That's the copper that is currently being smelted. Ah, <sighs> This is just one of the most satisfying redstone things that I've ever done. And I will probably continue to do this at, until I die. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just love these so much. But uh, over here, just throughout the whole map, we can see all the stuff that I've just kind of dabbled with. I don't plan on going through any of them in detail, especially since I don't know if any of them work anymore. I do know this one does work. Um, this one was actually designed by someone on Instagram that I used to follow called Andrew the Mad Lad, who was known for making technical redstone posts on Instagram. Yeah, he no longer makes any content nowadays, but back in the day, he would... Sh he pretty much taught me everything I know about redstone. And the thing that this thing does is that it's like a cycling storage unit. <laughs> and it's cool because like it can actually like... St ah! Well, when it's not moving, it can actually like store your stuff and items, you know? So you can just pretty much have all these rows have different things. And I guess you can also even label some of these with like 
different colored blocks so you know like which row it is. And honestly, it's just one of the coolest things I've ever had the pleasure of replicating from his tutorials. Although, I will not say it was an easy task, because look at this. <laughs> uh, I have no idea how it works. I just pretty much followed his tutorial block by block, and it seemed to work out just fine. And the fact that it has survived every single update up to this point, it, it, just, it just brings a little smile to my face. Perhaps I should also say that I'm chuffed to bits. <laughs> and I guess with that, that will conclude my little tour through memory lane and my creative builds. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. This was just a fun little casual video to do. Just to show what I've been up to behind the scenes for the past several years. It's just been really fun to like revisit all these builds and just reminisce about how fun it has been to work on them. But again, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to develop this world even further and with your ideas. Because I just wanna... I just wanna vibe with you guys. I just kinda wanna vibe and have fun with Minecraft. And I just think that I'd have a whole lot of fun doing it with you guys along with me for the ride. And yeah, I think that'll be it. I guess the uh, sub of the day is gonna be the... Uh, just nothing but chipotle and bread or something. I don't know. <laughs> or if you want a backup sub of the day, it's just going to be the, I don't know, uh, ham. <laughs> and that'll be it. I'm out of here.